Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Rachel Ellis. And I'm Chris Watkins. Tonight on SBTV News, we bring you RHA's Family Day, Filmmakers Club, and the season preview of Men and Women's Hockey. All this and more when we return. From the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, this is your SPTV News with Rachel Ellis and Chris Watkins. This past Saturday was RHA's Family Day. Freshmen had the chance to show their families how their average day in college is. SPTV's JJ Luther has more on the story. This past Saturday was Family Day at UWSP. Family Day is designed to have freshmen show their parents around Stevens Point. Whether it's on campus or off campus, there are a ton of events going on that they can do together. Students can show their parents around campus, take them to their classrooms, or even get a chance just to hang out at the brew house or the bookstore. Um, we went to the Point Brewery and we did the tour and we did like the beer tasting and all that kind of stuff. And then we went to Wausau that night and we stayed at a hotel, we went to the mall, like we went shopping and stuff. So yeah, it was good. The Residence Hall Association, otherwise known as the RHA, puts this event together. Their mission overall is to have parents see what their son or daughter does on a daily basis. I think it is important for like us to see our family, first of all, because you know, we don't see them as much as we used to. But I think it's important for them to see like where we live, like because we're their children, like we're their family. So I think it's important for them to see where we live and like what we do every day and you know, the buildings that we walk to and like what our dorms are like and the friends we have because it pretty like puts them at ease knowing that we're okay and that we're happy. For SPTV News, I'm JJ Luther. To make next year's Family Day even better, talk to your residence hall advisors and learn how you can help. Halloween is this Saturday and Stevens Point area trick-or-treating times are from 5 to 8 p.m. If you would like to know what the times are for other nearby areas, visit the Stevens Point Journal website. Debo will be featuring Halloween-themed desserts this Saturday. Some of the baked goods include pumpkin spice cream cheese muffins, cheesecake, seasonal sugar cookies, and tombstone brownies. You can grab these treats from 4 to 6 p.m. Coffee and Culture's topic for Thursday, October 29th is called Let's Talk About Disabilities. The Disability Advisory Council will be presenting at this meeting along with DWSP students. This allows students the opportunity to open up about this topic. It will begin at 4 p.m. in the DUC Laird Center. The Geography Department is offering students a week-long trip to Memphis and the Mississippi Delta for course credit. This is for Geography 393, Field Trip in Geography, the Environment and Culture of the Mississippi Delta. Students will be traveling for eight days and seven nights during spring break via coach bus. The course fee is $990, which includes hotels, transportation, museum entrance fees, gratuities, food, tour guides, etc. It will be charged to your student account. The course credit can be applied to the GEP experiential learning and interdisciplinary study requirements. For those in the old GDP system, it can count as a wellness enhancement credit. Students that are interested in this trip can contact Lisa Theo for permission and register and make sure to include their student ID number. For those who are looking to get off campus next year, UWSP is having a fall living options fair. Landlords will be present for the chance to meet them, see what living spaces suit you best, and possibly sign leases. This will be held in the DUC Laird Room on November 4th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. SIEO is hosting an etiquette dinner for students to learn how to properly interact at a formal dinner. They will receive tips from UWSB professors and other faculty members. There will be a full course meal. It will be held in the Laird Center, room 230A, on November 9th from 5 to 8 p.m. University writers are preparing their creative works for their annually published book. SPTV's Rachel Ellis has the story. A group of students from all over campus came together to hone their writing skills through prompts and feedback of their peers. We usually have a story prompt um, where basically you write for about 10 minutes and just keep writing whatever comes to your head based on whatever the story is. So it's right on the spot. We will uh, go around the group and share anything that we've um, written for our classes and see if we can edit each other's pieces. But we will also do prompts. Uh, usually we post about two prompts and everybody can pick between one and take about 10 minutes to uh, write it uh, based on each of the prompts. Along with weekly meetings, 
Each year, the club publishes an anthology of student works. And if you submit it to our email, we will look over it, vote on it during winter break, and uh, hopefully you'll get chosen. All students are welcomed and encouraged to submit pieces from either categories of prose, poetry, and graphic design. During the end of the meeting, students break up into smaller, individual groups to discuss writing for classes and extracurricular activities outside of academics. Caleb spoke with us about what he enjoys most about participating in the club. Far my favorite part about this club is that I get to come and write a story, some short, some long, it doesn't matter, and I get to do it surrounded by people that actually care about the same thing. To find out more information, please visit their website and Facebook page. This has been Rachel Ellis reporting for SBTV. The University Writers Club holds its weekly meetings on Mondays at 7 p.m. in the CCC, room 232. Gamma Pi Delta sorority members will be trick-or-treating for something besides candy this year. They will be going around the community asking for canned goods on Halloween. All of these donations will go to the cupboard, which is UWSP's food pantry. They will be collecting donations from 5 to 8 p.m. The UWSP Filmmakers Club has been around on campus for a few years now, but new president Adonis Stewart is doing his best to make it more of a hands-on experience. Semester, we're really just moving more into actually filming stuff, and we I mean, we filmed the promo video for um, our film challenge that's coming up. So, and we're just filmed the thing, uh, filmed the, uh, some shots for the competitive dance teams video. So, a lot more hands-on this semester than in prior semesters, and less in the classroom stuff because I think we get enough of that in class. The club is also featuring a film challenge that anyone is welcome to participate in. We also have our 48-hour film challenge, which is coming up, which basically, as the name sounds, it is 48 hours to make a film, and then we watch them all on a Sunday. So it starts on the Friday, November the 6th, and it ends on, the, on November the 8th. Noble Runman will have more coverage on the 48-hour film challenge next week. SIEO is giving students an opportunity for students to come, relax, and express themselves through their art. This semester focuses mainly on stress management. Canvas, paint, and brushes will be provided for free to all students. Art in Pieces will be held on November 4th at 5.30 to 7 p.m. The UWSP community learned new ways to reduce energy use and have a more sustainable lifestyle at the National Campus Sustainability Fair. Sarah Burkhardt has more. Students and community members gathered in the Laird Room on Wednesday for the National Campus Sustainability Day Fair. We have businesses, nonprofit organizations, and student groups provided information about sustainability in various arenas, including locally produced food, fair trade products, sustainable transportation, energy efficiency, and waste management. efficiency in central Wisconsin with the MRA. Uh, and we basically are trying to mitigate the effects of climate change and other things. So we use vermicomposting. Basically we use, we take raw fruit and vegetables and we add worms to the process. So we have worms. These worms here eat the fruit and vegetable and the finished product is compost again. So we'll take this 10 pounds of worms, we'll eat 10 pounds of fruit and vegetables a day. So it's an instant composting process that expedites the process. And then again, we add that back to campus to uh, provide nutrients for our perennial beds. Campus Sustainability Day recognizes the successes, challenges, and innovation in higher education to reduce the impact people have on the planet. Anyone interested in being more environmentally conscious should check out the Students for Sustainable Communities Club. That's all we have for you on news tonight. Up next, we have the latest in sports.
all of the music's here on PMTV Late Night. Catch PMTV running all night long only on SPTV. Let's have a party. Let's have a Got an itch to be on air? Join the SPTV News Crew. Being an on and off air reporter will help you gain experience in interviewing, shooting and editing video, and reporting behind the anchor desk. Join SPTV News, pointing to you. Don't let the snow and cold get you down this winter. frozen tundra outside may keep you indoors, but here at SPTV, we'll still be getting you the best news, sports coverage, and entertainment that you need. Don't freeze your fingers and toes off to find out what's happening around campus. Stay warm, everyone. Now, let's go to Justin Pomplin with this week's sports. Thank you, Rachel. The WSP football team lost its third game in a row to a ranked opponent as they fell to sixth ranked UW Whitewater 35 to 27. Cody Nuremberg came on in relief of Kyle Larson to throw for 332 yards with three touchdowns and three interceptions. His top receiver was Matt Sosinski, who hauled in eight passes for 196 yards and a touchdown. Logan Taylor and Jared Ponko also had touchdown receptions for the pointers, whose record now sits at three and four overall and one and three against the WIAC. Pointers look to get back on track this weekend when they host lacrosse at Gerke Park with kickoff at 1 p.m. Spash football team looks to continue its playoff run this Friday when they travel to top-ranked Kimberly after defeating D.C. Everest last week. Kickoff is scheduled for 7 p.m. as the Panthers try to pull off the upset. Second-ranked UWSP men's hockey team is preparing for a season in which they hope to make a run for a third consecutive national championship game appearance. SPTV's Nathan Hansen has more. This year's Pointers men's hockey team features a mixture of youth and experienced players. This has them ranked number two in the national preseason poll. Um, you know, we got a lot of new faces. We got 11 new, uh, new faces on our roster, 18 returning. I really don't put much stock in the, in the preseason poll. Um, within the WIAC, it'll be extremely competitive every night. Since Brandon Jager was lost to graduation, the goalie situation is unclear for the Pointers. You know, all three, uh, all three goalies can play. Uh, all three goalies will compete, and you know, uh, they'll, they'll be, they'll be graded based on their practice performance to give them an opportunity to play in the games. And you know, we're, we're ultimately three days out of uh, our first regular season game, and I have no idea who we're playing this weekend. Coach Brooks has high expectations for Kyle Sharkey and Joe Kalis as they take on a large leadership role this year. Well, both those kids have to be two of the top players in the country. Those kids have to lead, uh, lead our team every day. You know, both extremely gifted. They both have to take that next step from a junior to a senior. Uh, you know, and Joe's expectation, Kyle's expectation right now is to take that next step to, to put themselves on the map to be premier players at our level. Two-time captain Evan Dixon is entering his senior year. Time is running out on his pointer's career. I can't believe it's, it's flown by this fast, but I think it makes everything a little bit more special. Everything means a little bit more. Um, just trying to take it day by day, kind of and enjoy the moment. Embracing a bigger leadership role is key for helping the younger players in the program grow. Uh, just bringing my best every day, trying to maintain a positive attitude, bringing that to the rink, and uh, just kind of leading by example. I think you know the, the other returners help instill that culture in those guys and that's important because that's going to be their role in, in the years to come. Personally for Evan, working as hard as he can all the time has and will be his season goal. Give my all every day. Um, you know, if I, if I give it 100% every day then, then I end up having no regrets for myself. The pointers start the season October 30th at 7.30 p.m. in Illinois against Aurora University. The 10th ranked UWSP women's hockey season also begins this weekend when they take on St. Olaf on Friday and Saturday. Head coach Ann Nineman hopes to build on the success from last year to get to the top of the conference this season. 
we did lose quite a bit defensively last year. Um, so that's going to be kind of where we start. Um, our offense will be as productive, more productive than we were last year. Um, so we're hoping to kind of end up on top of River Falls this year. Um, we've struggled with them the last couple of years at the very end. So we're hoping to, to finish out above them and conference champs and hopefully make another run for the NCAA tournament. The Pointers also have a number of younger players that will be taking the ice this season and they will rely on the upperclassmen to lead them this year. There are a lot of talented freshmen this year and it's been very easy to work with them. Personally, I just try to give them as much constructive criticism as I can during practice and they're all willing to listen and try new things so it's been really easy to work with them. That is all we have for sports for today. Sarah Burkard with the latest in entertainment news after the break. Be a part of something super Greek at UWSP. There are nine chapters and colonies on campus. Phi Sigma Phi, Gamma Phi Delta, Theta Xi, Sigma Delta Rho, Sigma Tau Gamma, Delta Phi Epsilon, Tau Kappa Epsilon, Phi Mu Alpha Sinfonia, and Phi Omega. Greek life at UWSP is a great way to build your personal support system and resume. With Greek life at UWSP, you won't just be a member, but a happy friend to the chapters and colonies for life. See what opportunities Greek life could offer you. Great opportunity to promote leadership, a great way to get connections, and also to build bonds between different groups. To get the opportunity to grow yourself as a leader and as a person, both through your organization and connections through inner Greek Council and other avenues like that. Greek life isn't what you see in the movies. I recommend checking out one of the recruitment events for the organizations and just seeing maybe you belong there. My name is Lance Castor. I graduated from UW Stevens Point in 2014. I started at SPTV my junior year. I was looking for a fun experience that also provided me with a chance to learn something, and SPTV was the place to come. Right now, I'm employed at WFRV TV, the CBS affiliate located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I, I can handle it because of what I was able to learn here at SPTV. You can be as creative as you want here. The only limits are those that you put on yourself. Those limits will just. Sarah Burkhart with your latest SVTV Entertainment. This past Wednesday, First Year Seminar 102 from Hello Kitty to, to Samurai hosted a screening of The Wind Rises in the theater in the DUC. Eli Peterson has more. The Wind Rises, the final film released by the acclaimed animator Hayao Miyazaki, was screened to celebrate the filmmaker's retirement. The film takes place during World War II, but does not contain any violent scenes. We're using this film as a chance to think about an anti-war pacifist perspective 70 years after the end of World War II in Asia. The screening was free and open to the public. Viewers were encouraged to dress up in costume for the film. Um, students are also encouraged to come in cosplay which is a, a Japanese uh, sort of pop culture practice where you dress as characters in other animations, in um, manga. So I'm hoping we're coming sort of dressed up and ready to kick off uh, this week of events. Students in the first year seminar class acquired research of the movie, but had not yet seen it. Um, I don't know much about this movie because the, for the, all the first year seminary students, we are. this is going to be our first time watching it for a majority of us. But this is about World War II and how the main character decided to create the planes that were used into the movie. Overall, the screening had a great turnout with 166 individuals showing up. For SPTV, this is Eli Peterson. If you are interested in The Wind Rises, it is available to rent or buy now. Centertainment Cinema is showing a rom-com called Trainwreck. Amy Schumer and Bill Hatter come together as Amy tries to put her life in place. 
This movie will play both Wednesday, November 4th, and Friday, November 6th from 7 to 9 p.m. at 9.30 to 11.45 p.m. Remember to bring your student ID for free admission. Iftikhar is coming to UWSP. This band blends elements of psychedelic rock, electronica, and funk. Bands such as Pink Floyd, Lotus, Fish, and many others influence them. The members from this band are from Madison and Appleton areas. The concert will be on November 12th from 8 to 10.30 p.m. in the Encore Room. There will be auditions for UWSP Spring Opera Workshop on Wednesday. This year's production will be Mozart's The Magic Flute. It will feature German songs and English dialogue. Participants will prepare an aria in German or English, depending on their desired role. They also need to memorize a short monologue. There is a sign-up sheet posted to the bulletin board outside of the NFAC room 312. Love songs in many different languages will be heard in a voice recital at UWSP. Assistant Professor Music Matthew Murham will sing songs in English, Czech, German, French, Italian, and Welsh. Murham released his first international record recording in 2011 and made his debut in Carnegie Hall in 2013. Pianist Kristen Diplo and harpist Rosalie Gilbert will accompany him. This concert is part of the music department scholarship series, The Recital. This will take place on November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. UWSP's Carlson Gallery will be showcasing fine art prints by more than 70 nationally and internationally recognized artists. This part of an exhibit called A Look Back, Bob Erickson and the Pointer Press. Along with this exhibit, a selection of prints created in the last 25 years by UWSP students in printmaking classes will be on display. This exhibit runs from November 8th to December 3rd. The opening reception will be on Monday, November 9th from 4 to 6 p.m. The exhibit and reception are open to the public. That's all for entertainment tonight. Rachel and Chris after the break. I'm Curtis Round. This is Adam Yurkovsky and Justin Poplin. If you enjoy our final take show, make sure you tune in every week to stay up to date on Stevens Point Sports. Remember, pointers, anything pointers, anything sports. Stand by camera one. Coming in on camera in five, four, three, two, one. Take camera one. SPTV News serves Stevens Point, the largest city in Portage County and home to 26,000 people. SPTV News covers campus, local, and national news, as well as local sports and entertainment. Melissa Mitrovic will present you the latest in Point News. Tune in to Charter Channel 983 or visit our YouTube channel. SPTV News, pointing to you. Are you interested in pursuing a career in animals or just looking for a way to help preserve wildlife? Then the Wildlife Society might be just for you. As one of the largest organizations at UWSB, you will have your chance to help in projects that study and preserve animals, network with professionals, and meet like-minded people. Join us Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and join the Wildlife Society today. My name is Lance Caster. I graduated from UW-Stevens Point in 2014. I started at SPTV my junior year. I was looking for a fun experience that also provide me with a chance to learn something, and SPTV was the place to come. Right now, I'm employed at WFRV-TV, the CBS affiliate located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I, I can handle it because of what I was able to learn here at SPTV. You can be as creative as you want here. The only limits are those that you put on yourself. Those limits will just... Alright, so guys, any Halloween plans, costume ideas? I think I'm going to be a minion. Oh, let me yeah, find I like out. It. Yeah, Rachel, like it. what are you going to be? I'm going to be some sort of superhero, but I'm not quite sure what yet. Hmm. But it'll be fun. So I'm going to be myself a sports <laughs> information <laughs> assistant. There's a game Saturday, so. Nice, yeah. nice. I was thinking the same thing. I was going to be either A, Stephen A. Smith, B, 
smart guy, just a lot taller, or C, a panther, because all I seem to wear is black with sweatpants, coat, and my hat. So, I don't know, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll try but, not to scare the children. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. I think a big two-footed cat would. But um, anyway, guys, that's all we have for you this week. Um, be sure to check out our social media pages for upcoming stories and updates. And stay tuned for Question of the Week with, Bra with Rachel and Brian. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night and a safe Halloween weekend. Brian Davila. And I'm Rachel Ellis. We have special guest Kevin. Woo! And this is the questions of the week. Okay. Spoke ghost three times out. G H O S T, G H O S T, G H O S T. What do you put in the toaster? Toast. Another one. You put bread in the toaster. Oh, okay. G H O S T, G H O S T, G H O S T. What do you put in a toaster? Toast. A bagel. What do you put in a toaster? Toast. What do you put in a toaster? Toast. Put bread in the toaster. Dang it. <laughs> now what do you put in a toaster? Toast. <laughs>